So I think the one question I get more often than anything else is why Portland? Like why focus on Portland startups? Like if you started blogging about tech in general or startups, if, you know, nearly 17 years ago, you had started talking about venture funding and, and everything that was happening, like a tech crunch or one of those, like you could have had a much larger publication and a much larger following. And, and I think the fact of the matter is there, there are several reasons why I've decided to focus on Portland, apart from the fact that I live here and I love Portland and, and I love Oregon dearly, but I've decided to focus on the companies here and the founders here. Because first and foremost, just being a founder, it sucks. 99% of the time, being a founder is hard. And if you've never had the opportunity to be a founder, if you've never been an entrepreneur, it may seem really fun and interesting, but it's lonely, it's taxing, it's emotionally and mentally draining and exhausting. So first and foremost, I focus on Portland startups because not a lot of people do. And those founders deserve that celebration. And those companies deserve to be highlighted. And the people doing the work really deserve to be recognized. So that, first and foremost, is why I do it. I tried to be a founder, realized I wasn't a founder, and wanted to celebrate those folks who wanted to be founders or who were good at being founders. So that's the primary reason that I tend to focus on Portland. Second is I'm just, I'm, those are the folks I'm passionate about. Like, not an ecosystem builder, not interested in the political aspects of it or the economic development aspects of it. I'm really passionate about people who have ideas who want to see those ideas come to fruition. And using my experience and knowledge and network to help those folks in Portland realize those ideas and those dreams. That's super important to me. And it's super important that they have the support and the mentorship that they need to make those things happen or to help them realize that what they're chasing is not viable and that they shouldn't waste time and money on it. Another reason is there's just so many interesting small things happening in Portland that have the potential to be huge. Whether the founder wants it to be huge or not, I think we've seen that time and time again with things like coffee and donuts and ice cream and shoes and clothes and tech. We see it all the time in Portland, somebody just with the courage to have a different perspective on a product or a service and taking the opportunity to pursue that, it becomes something much larger than they ever expected it to be. And I want to give them every chance of accomplishing that or at least having the opportunity to pursue that if that's what they choose to do. If they don't want to pursue that, I don't want to force them to do that. But I do want them to have the opportunity if that's something they would like to do. And then the final and probably most important reason I do this is I am a firm believer that there's the Bay Area and things that work in the Bay Area, and then there's everywhere else in the world. And so I think it's highly likely that things that work in Portland, Oregon are more likely to work in other areas of the country, in other cities around the world, than trying to replicate something that happened in the Bay Area or Silicon Valley. I think we 
struggle with the same things a lot of cities struggle with. I think we have the challenges a lot of communities face. And yet we also have unique opportunities because of what Portland is, because of what Oregon is, that present us with, you know, the opportunity to pursue things that might not work in the Bay Area or might not get the recognition they deserve in the Bay Area. And I think there are hundreds, if not thousands of other places exactly like that. So if you're seeing me highlight things here, you're hearing stories about Portland, you're seeing the things that we celebrate as part of our startup community, then maybe if you're a founder in Omaha or New York or Kobe, maybe you start to see that your idea does have potential and that your community is out there. Maybe you don't ascribe to the chasing billion dollar valuations or raising a lot of venture capital, but maybe in the companies that are being built in Portland, in the founders, I'm lucky enough to get to hang out with and work with. Maybe in one of their stories, you see a little bit of your story. And if I can continue to share those stories, not only to highlight those founders, but also to maybe give you a little motivation to keep working on what you're working on, no matter where you are, then I think that has value. So that's my hope is that even if Portland, Oregon isn't important to you, <laughs> even, even if you couldn't care less about what's happening in Portland, I hope you continue to hang out with me to hear these stories, to hear what's happening, to see the trends and themes and, and what happens within a startup community. And I hope you can take those learnings and apply them to where you are. Apply them to the community you live in and apply them to the startups and founders with which you surround yourself. So that's why I do this. That's why I focus on Portland. And that's why I try week in and week out to find those stories help those founders, to help Portland, but ideally also to help you. So I sincerely hope that that helps. All right. Hope you're doing okay. Hang in there. And until we get the chance to chat again, please keep up the good work.